please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Katanji Brown Jackson, do solemnly swear. I, Katanji Brown Jackson, do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Justice Katanji Brown Jackson being sworn in today as the first black woman ever on the United States Supreme Court. She was joined by her husband and her two daughters, saying in the statement that she is grateful to be part of the promise of our great nation. It was an historic moment, to be sure, overshadowed, though, by the highly polarized and controversial final end to this term. Today, the Supreme Court severely curtailing the ability of the EPA to deal with the climate crisis. Justice Elena Kagan slammed the court's decision in her dissent, writing this, quote, the court appoints itself instead of Congress or the expert agency, the decision maker on climate policy. I cannot think of many things more frightening. Wow. This comes as the court concludes one of the most radical and alarming terms in its history after eroding the right of women to control their own bodies the right to seek redress for civil rights violations by police, separation of church and state, and the ability of states to determine their own gun control policies. President Biden early this morning condemned the recent actions of the court, calling them outrageous and destabilizing. And the moment only grows more urgent. Today, the Supreme Court agreed to hear a case to decide whether legislatures, not state courts, have final authority to decide how elections for federal candidates are conducted. An argument supporters of the big lie have been making to overturn the 2020 election. Just that. <laughs> Let's bring in Dahlia Lithwick, legal correspondent and senior editor for Slate. She also hosts the legal podcast, Amicus, and Fatima Goss-Graves, president and CEO of the National Women's Law Center. You know, Dahlia... <laughs> I spoke to someone on the other side of the political divide, and I said, how do you feel about the Supreme Court? Um, this was a champion of, of Trump's appointees to it. And he said, well, I try to remind myself that elections have consequences. I mean, this court feels like a Frankenstein, even to the people who voted, some of the people who voted for Donald Trump. W what is sort of the, the idea of how far they will go? Yeah, it's such a it's such an interesting problem when even the winning side isn't quite sure that they're winning. Uh, it suggests massive institutional destabilization, and I think no matter what side of the divide, there's a divide. What side of the divide you're on? I think it's really alarming to see a court that just looks like it's kind of become a vending machine. You know, where the conservative legal movement, the Federal Society, time after time not only gets exactly what it wants, but it gets the maximalist iteration of that. And I think that it's really kind of goes to this question of, you have a court with a 25% approval rating, the lowest in polling history, and every opportunity it's given to re-legitimize itself, to pump the brakes, to signal in some fashion that this just isn't gonna go harder and faster and more dangerous, the court resists that temptation. I think that's scary no matter where you are on the political spectrum, if you believe in the rule. Yeah, I mean, it is the activism and the radical nature of the, the, the written words. I mean, F Fatima, I think it was Justice Sotomayor who described the stench of having a state legislature wait, wait for the appointment and confirmation of these justices before writing a law meant to designed to make their way to the Supreme Court because they knew what they would do. I mean, how do you, how do you redeem an institution that is so flagrantly and publicly and brazenly playing into and working with that kind of, that kind of political nature of the cases they take and the decisions they write? Well, we should all be deeply worried. In its current configuration and approach, I don't know that it will be redeemable in the way that it was with the public. 
it is acting clearly political and it is it has become the vehicle to achieve the long lasting political ideas of the right and and that's not good for anyone that's not good for stability it's not good for democracy when you're talking about the divide i was thinking well maybe the divide is those who are interested in a clear, consistent rule of law and democracy and those who are interested in destabilization, because that is what it feels like in this time. Dahlia, I want to ask you about the public perception of a court that is mandating pregnancy and permitting states to pass abortion bans that do not have an exception for life of the mother in some instances, but then banning those states from banning guns. I mean, what is the public to think of this court, again, regardless of their political party affiliation? I mean, I think the most interesting tell in the past week was Justice Alito's majority opinion in Dobbs. You know, two points. One, he had the opportunity to change things, right? This is the only time in history that an entire opinion was leaked. And when people recoil at the snark and at the bad history and at the pot shots at the justices that came before, he removed none of those. Uh, so I think what he's telling us is he doesn't much care what the public thinks. And then he bakes it right into the opinion. He says, this may pull badly, not my problem. This may land badly, not my problem. If you don't like it, go to your polling places and fix it. And so I think, again, in a strange way, the court is almost taking this weird, subversive pride in um, having public opinion be at 70, 80 uh, percent in opposition to these very maximalist rulings. And there almost seems to be this kind of relishing the hate that is unlike anything I have ever seen in a court that, you know, let's remember again, the only, only power they have is public legitimacy and to squander it and to squander it knowing that the public is furious is the kind of thing I've just never seen in my career. I, you know, if Fatima Clarence Thomas taking on contraception and same sex relationships and gay marriage um, feels like everything Dahlia said on steroids. That's right. I mean, when you think about contraception, more than 90% of women in this country have used contraception at some point in their life. So he is taking on things that are enormously popular, that are long standing a part of our constitution in terms of their protections. So multiple generations have grown up with that certainty. And so they're signaling that everything is on the table that they are okay with pulling us back to a time when none of our rights were recognized fully, and also trying to make people believe that there's nothing that they can do about it as they stand mm -hmm. behind now two rows of fencing. And that's just not the case.